Good morning. This is my Carlsbad Caverns mug. So it can fill up the cavern with coffee. And then it can, when you drink it, it gets lower. There's bats. Anyway. Um, there was a time uh, with Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, that he had this dream that really troubled him. And he called Daniel in. And it was, um, you know, the vision of this large, um, kind of like a statue or whatever. And um, Daniel was very troubled when he was told about it because it was kind of forewarning that ne King Nebuchadnezzar's kingdom was going to crumble. Um, Daniel was afraid to tell them, him that. But, you know, King Nebuchadnezzar listened and he heard what the Lord was telling him. And Daniel even gave him some suggestions about how to respond to such a warning. And it was it was a pretty scary warning. You know, basically there was a watcher sent from heaven, the Holy One who like kind of cut down a tree and this left some of the stump there. And he was saying, you know, you're that tree and your kingdom is supposed to be taken away from you. And um, you're gonna go eat grass. And you know, it, it wasn't a dream anybody would want. Um, and Nebuchadnezzar was was definitely touched and impacted by the interpretation of the dream. But um, as time goes on, it doesn't happen. 12 months pass by and this warning from God, this word from God didn't happen in Nebuchadnezzar's life. So it says in Daniel 4 uh, verse 28, after this time, it says all this came up upon King Nebuchadnezzar at the end of the 12 months he was walking around his royal palace of Babylon, and the king spoke, saying, Is not this great Babylon that I have built for a royal dwelling by my mighty power and for the honor of my majesty? And it says in verse 31, While the word was still in the king's mouth, a voice fell from heaven. King Nebuchadnezzar, to you it is spoken. The kingdom has departed from you, and they shall drive you from men, and your dwelling shall be with the beasts of the field. They shall make you eat grass like oxen until seven times pass over you, and you will know that the most high rules in the kingdom of men and gives it to whomever he chooses. And if you know the rest of the story, he lost his mind for a season until he lifted his eyes and gave glory to God. But what hits me this morning about this passage is it says at the end of 12 months, this happened. 12 months after the dream Nebuchadnezzar had. I don't know about you, but sometimes when we get a warning from God or a prophecy or we sense something, you know, whoa, I better really watch that. Or if we're single, like, I really got to walk in purity. Or you know what, I, I, I'm supposed to give this much money to the work of the kingdom. Or you know what? God wants me to be on time to work consistently. Or you know what? I'm not supposed to drink alcohol. Or you know what? These kinds of friends are not healthy for me in my walk. You get a warning. You get some kind of warning that says, look, if you continue in this pattern, it, you're going to get destroyed. And we feel it. We sense it. We receive it. <clears throat> but sometimes, like King Nebuchadnezzar, after 12 months, he had forgotten and lost respect and value for the warning because nothing was happening you know it's kind of like oh well that was interesting i'm gonna get on with my life but when we hear a word from the lord a warning we're to treasure it and never let it go no matter how long it takes because actually you know most warnings from god are intended to keep us from experiencing something so we shouldn't be experiencing anything if we're taking heed to the warnings it says in first thessalonians 5:20 despise not prophesyings or that's a kind of formal way of saying do not despise any words of prophecy and that word despise means to esteem something as as not really important disregard to kind of like you know walk by it to be passive about it um i know that in this day and age we get busy and we get we don't necessarily despise prophesying like hate them but we push warnings aside and we get on and get caught up with life or caught up with things we think are Christian and we're not taking heed to the things that God has warned us about. 
Nebuchadnezzar didn't have this happen until 12 months after the warning. I think it's because time went by. And he probably thought, well, maybe I just, the dream really wasn't, or I'm probably past that warning. But the truths of God endure forever. They don't change because our government votes something and says it's legal. And they don't change because we go to a church that says it's okay. His rules and warnings do not change because um, we kind of are in a different mood. The word of the Lord endures forever. Are there any warnings that God has given you that you might be despising, forgetting? And like King Nebuchadnezzar is just walking through your life saying, hmm, isn't this great? I think I'll do this. And it's always not a good thing to think to yourself. That means you're praying to yourself. Think to God and let him dialogue with you and help you think and assess things. Life is so fragile and we can mess up our lives like that. And that's not to scare us in a way to paralyze us. It's to scare us in a way to keep us sober-minded, dependent, and knowing that our steps will be sure as we are walking in the fear of the Lord. So like Nebuchadnezzar, <clears throat> let's not despise prophesying. Let's not let time pass and cause us to disregard a warning that God has given us. Let's not experience needless pain and suffering because we've despised, disregarded, forgotten, um, treated the word of the Lord like it's not really that precious. Shall we pray? Lord, thank you for um, the scriptures that warn us of things we would never see in ourselves. You said your word is like a mirror. And sometimes we look into it and we go, oh my gosh, I, I do that or I could do that. And we thank you that we have a pure mirror to help us see who we're really supposed to be and see who you don't want us to be. Thank you for being the author and the finisher of our faith. May we not be like King Nebuchadnezzar, walking within our dwelling places, thinking in our own heads, and disregarding things that you've warned us about. I pray that, Lord, we would tremble at your word, and we would never think that we are above any sin or any decision that could really destroy us and the people around us. Lord, may we walk humbly, meekly, dependently, and thus walk confidently and, and being comforted and having a sure, stable, steadfast existence. I pray for everyone who's listening, Lord, that you would give them the great sense to reverence your warnings, take heed to your warnings. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless.